Yeah, that action button is going to be pretty useful on the iPhone 15 Pro line. Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to the video you've been waiting for, gaming on the iPhone 15 Pro and the Pro Max. Now, before we go ahead and start, I just want to let you know that I can't show you any FPS readings because none of my uh, benchmark tools for FPS actually are updated for iOS 17 or the iPhone 15 Pro, that being GameBench and of course PerfDog. So I can't show any of that now. If you want to, I will put that video up on the gaming channel. But that being said, we will look at temperatures, battery drain, and what kind of console gaming performance Apple is giving us on the iPhone 15 Pro line. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the action button. And you're going with Thunder E. What does it have to do with anything for gaming? You saw it right there at the beginning of the video. I can pick up my device and go straight into the game I want to play. I love that. It's a simple feature, nothing too sexy about it, but it takes me straight into the game. And whether I, my game is paused or I I'm restarting, whatever the case may be, I get back to the spot where I was and I can continue my gameplay sessions. So I do like that with the action button. I think it's a very key gaming feature because now you can map any game you want. Now, speaking of gaming, Apple talked about console level gaming on the iPhone 15 Pro line. He talked about Resident Evil Village, which you're gonna be seeing in this video, Resident Evil 4 Remake, which I've been playing since GameCube. I might be playing this game for the rest of my life. Also talked about the new Assassin's Creed, Death Stranding, a division game, all that console level on this device. Now you're wondering, what are we getting? Is it PS4 console, PS5, Xbox Series X? Doesn't matter really, right? It all, what matters is the processor. And that's something that's really intriguing because Apple is going with the A17 Pro. It's not an A17 Bionic. And what that means for us is something clearly different, at least from their perspective. We do have some really inc interesting performance uh, boosts from this chipset that Apple is touting and I'm going to show you. First off, uh, Apple talked about having six cores in the GPU uh, with uh, 20, up to 20% performance uh, boost on that GPU, a 10 performance boost on the CPU, and they talked about the fact it's got built-in hardware ray tracing as well, uh, which gives us some really good lighting effects in different areas and also just better visual fidelity. Uh, but I also like the fact that they do have FX, uh, metal FX upscaling to, of course, give you some really nice upscaling textures and different things within your gameplay. But what does that mean in terms of numbers? Well, you know what? We do have uh, Geekbench 6, 6 to see what this actually brings to the table. And in terms of performance, let's take a look at what we get for both devices. Now the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max will have slightly different numbers because of the size. But in terms of single core, the 15 Pro is 2,925, uh, while the Pro Max is 2,908, while multi-core for the, for the 15 Pro is 7,265, compared to 7,194 on the Pro Max. Those are impressive numbers for these devices and much higher than last year. To give you perspective, the 14 Pro and the Pro Max from last year had single cores of uh, 1,881 and 1,861 respectively, multi-core 5,433 and 5,401 respectively. That is a over 1,000 boost on single core and over a almost a 2,000 boost on multi-core. So what does that mean for our gameplay? Well, Resident Evil Village played really well and played rather smooth. You can see how it looks. It looks really nice. Performance is really solid, but also the game is locked at 30 frames per second. We look at the um, settings here. It's locked at 30. This is a beta, by the way. I'm going to just state it again. It's a beta. 30 frames per second, resolution is 1560 by 720, so we're getting 720p resolution, and I can't change any of the settings, so hopefully in the final game, I will be able to do that. But I was able to see what they meant by some of those, uh, of course, the ray tracing elements, the lighting elements, the textures, you know, the assets and details. Apple also said, these are the same assets you will find in your console game, and yes, I have played Resident Evil Village. It looks rather the same. Now, how would I compare it to a console game? This kind of reminds me more of playing a game of Xbox Game Pass in terms of streaming, where it looks really good, uh, but of course you're playing at a lower resolution. And sometimes with Xbox Game Pass, you get that drop in resolution because of your internet connection. So you might go from 1080p to 720. So I am playing on 720 now, but it looks good. And everything Apple claims looks the way it should. But 
don't believe me, take a look at some of my gameplay sessions and just how I die constantly in this game. <sighs> It looked really good and it sounds really good. The audio speaker of the iPhone is solid and I know some of you are gonna be asking for a speaker test. I will do that if you want to on the gaming channel, Board Gamer. Stay tuned and check it out there. Now, when it comes to temperatures, how are temperatures off uh, the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max while playing a game like Resident Evil, it's a console level game. Well, I got temperatures about 109 degrees while playing this and you can see that that's actually not bad. That is in line with, uh, with certain mobile devices uh, playing mobile games. But again, this is pretty solid. And I think that, I think a lot of people will like it in that respect. Plus, you're not holding the phone, you're using a controller here. What about mobile games? Now you're going, okay, we've seen that. What about the games we usually play, right? What about Call of Duty Mobile? Well, Call of Duty Mobile ran really well. Uh, I was able to play, of course, on ultra medium settings, flawlessly using the controller without the controller, it played solid as well. PUBG Mobile, the same thing, playing at extreme HDR or ultra HD ultra. Gaming performance was really good. You could see it, it felt smooth and very solid. Now, sure these games are not optimized yet for this chipset, so we might see higher performances, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, of course, I gotta bring up Genshin Impact. This is a game that terrorizes a lot of gamers in whatever they do. Now, Genshin is one of those games where, of course, we see high temperatures and also slow down performance. Now, I can't give you the FPS readouts yet, but I can tell you that it did run really smooth while playing, of course. This is playing for about 20 to 25 minutes. And in terms of performance, it was solid. I was playing at 60 frames per second, extreme settings, and it showed really well and it ran smooth. But here's the kicker, temperatures. Temperatures on Genshin Impact were tremendously high at 112 degrees at its highest. So that's roughly around 42 to 43 degrees Celsius. And you can see how uh, this can affect your gaming sessions. I also did notice that yes, the iPhone did dim down the screen to of course evade that. So that feature is still built in there, uh, but the temperatures ran rather high. So to combat those temperatures, I decided to try something a little bit different. I was able to get the cryo armor case from Spigen. This is not sponsor, but I went to see how it would affect it in terms of temperatures playing Genshin Impact. So I did play Genshin for the same amount of time. And with the cryo armor case, it was completely different. My temperatures were between 102 and 105. That is the stark difference from 112. So, hey, if you're gonna be playing at least Android games for a while, this will cool it down for you quite effectively, and I think it's, it's actually quite useful. I'll leave a link for you guys down below. So you're thinking, okay, I wanna use that case, what about my controllers? Well, the case will not work with your controllers, it's just too thick. Uh, most cases don't really work with controllers, and you're wondering which controllers actually work. First of all, none of your Lightning controllers will work. You might as well just toss that aside. If you have those, I'm sorry, you can give it to like a younger brother or cousin who has uh, an older iPhone, that will work well. In terms of the USB ones, if you have one of the Android USB ones, which ones will work on here? Well, currently there's only one. I did try my Razer Kishi, it didn't work, but it's pretty much just the backbone controller. And to be precise, it's a certain back, it's a certain update level on the backbone control. I believe version 1.12 and up does support the iPhone 15. You can update it through the backbone app, and it's something that also backbone says that if you have issues with any of the controls, they will just swap it out for you. So that's the only controller that works at the moment for at least gaming on the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max. Now, what about Game streaming services, Xbox Game Pass, plays well flawlessly. Uh, you know, we've got a really good uh, Wi-Fi chipset in there as well as also 5G chipset. So you're able to game and stream quite effectively on this device where you're playing games like Starfield, which is amazing to just jump in and play, especially on that display with the high resolution uh, and also such brightness. I think it's about 1700 nits or 1750 nits. Peak brightness, 2000, of course, at outside, as you would expect. 
Um, and I think when you look at everything overall in terms of gaming, whether you're playing mobile games or you're playing console level games, this is really interesting because Apple is trying, is changing that conversation here, right? I was one of those people who went, look, I love the idea of playing my game streaming services like Xbox Game Pass on my device. Now, the one thing that is a downside is that I cannot play those games when I'm offline. So AKA in the air and I travel a lot. Apple is kind of changing that dynamic by saying, hey, you can play because you can download and play games like Resident Evil, Dead Stranding, uh, all that stuff, Resident Evil 4 Remake, uh, on your iPhone directly and get the same performance as you would find in your console. Is it PS5, is it Xbox Series X, is it PS4, Xbox uh, One X? I can't fully tell you yet, but I would say it's closer to a game streaming service in terms of performance and look. Now, let me know what you guys think about what the iPhone gaming is like and what it brings to the table. Are you impressed? Are you satisfied? Do you think this is a big jump that we had from last year? The fact that we can play current console level games on your iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. This is Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy your entertainment. All right, back to Resident Evil. Let's see if I can pass that stage. I love it. You just get right back into it. Look at that. Like you hit the button and you get right back into it.